Hey everybody, Jamie here with Enigmatic Pneumatics and in this video we're going to take a look at a solar installation we did with Tisha where we installed 400 watts of solar panels on her roof. That's the most I've ever put on a van roof yet. This was at last year's van build. In most cases folks want to come in, put their name on the list, get the job done and be on their way but in Tisha's case that wasn't good enough. She wanted to roll up her sleeves get involved and see all of the steps of the installation so she would understand it and know moving forward exactly how all the pieces fit together and she was a fast learner you'll see for yourself it came out great let's take a look i'm here today with tisha who's made the decision to live out of her van and one of the things that really makes it nice as an accessory when you live in your van is to have, a, have unlimited power with unlimited power, she can power her refrigerator to have perishable stay a little longer, have cold drinks, and also she can power all her small and handheld electronics. Another thing that the power helps for is she has this huge laptop that she uses to make video games with. And there is also another reason that you wanted power for your van. Tell us a little bit about that. So I have a friend who's in a wheelchair and she uh, needs breathing machines and a lot of uh, other machines at night to be able to survive and uh, I've talked with her for years about the possibility of going out and going camping and stuff she's never been camping and um, we'd like to have a system where there's enough power that no matter what she's always going to be able to have electricity to, to power all of the machines that she needs for her medical reasons and so um, this setup is going to be a bit excessive for me personally. I don't always need that much power, but um, it's going to be good to know that I have it in case I have a friend who wants to come with me and maybe get the experiences that they normally wouldn't otherwise be able to. Great. How much solar are we putting on today, Tisha? So it's a 400 watt solar panel system. I have a 300 watt uh, amp hour battery bank and I'd like to expand that in the future, so I'm hoping that we can get the uh, solar panels a little bit compact in case I, just in case I need to add more panels later on. Um, and I, eventually I'd like to have a 600 amp hour battery system. So. Awesome, well, let's get started. Sweet. Okay, we'll start laying these out. Now, where are we gonna put the, so, the solar controller and all that? Where do you want that? Do you want okay, it on that so wall? The controller's gonna be like right here. So, I mean, if possible, if we could like even just remove this, we can leave this and then put the solar controller or the uh, charge controller right here. It comes through the window or something, it was my initial idea, but we can do it like through the roof is fine if that's what you that's because we're gonna be drilling. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, the charge control is right here and then the cables will go here back behind the uh, cabinets and then right here to the batteries and then the batteries will go back behind there to the fuse box and to the inverter. I've already got the inverter pump. Okay. Larry, what do yeah. you think about self-tappers? What's your position on that? Because this is a pretty built-out ceiling. I think if you fasten them down good enough, them self-tappers ought to hold. I'd love some self-tappers because then, I mean, I really like the windows. I do too, and, and if I bolt through it, then you're going to see that. Fantastic or a max air fan at some point. So we I say we leave that back area. I don't want a fan ever at any point. You never think you're gonna No, wear it. I haven't had problems with needing uh, moisture control. So it's gonna go lengthwise. Uh, that's so that's the wide way. I, I'd like to do two and two. So length, length. So the way that you have the, the cardboard right now, that was the direction that I was planning, yeah. So you wanna go like this? Yeah, two and two, like that, exactly. So we probably want the wires on this side, yeah? Yeah. And then the wires would be pointed in the middle, and then they'd all just kind of, like on the other side, they'd be the other direction. All right, let's, I'll, I'll get you another panel. This one would be turned around. Well, 
Well, I was gonna do it myself, and that's when about when I saw your video. Uh oh. Was I was already getting everything in, like I got the batteries in place. They're already kind of secured down, and even the chart. Uh, the need, uh, inverter is secure. I was gonna put some Loctite on them. There's some Loctite I gave somebody yesterday. And then I was just thinking, I'll, I, I'd rather do it with somebody who already knows what they're doing, because this was my first time setting it up. Right. And I'm glad I did, because I forgot the, the fuses and stuff. I didn't know I need, needed fuses between everything. So I'm really happy about it. So is that a glue? This is called Loctite, and Locked. it's for it's a, a thread locker, and it's for the purposes of once you get it in place, it locks it down so it doesn't move. Nice. But they make it they make different colors for the application, and some are for service. So you can take this off if you want. This is a oh, permanent okay. Loctite. Okay. But it will keep. I'm that. okay with it permanent because mm. then it deters theft. Mm. But yeah, whatever you've got is good. Okay. So let's just put. and then those two on that side in parallel and then connect the groups together in parallel is that going to uh, increase my voltage or is that going to stay at the 12 volt because they are they are the 12 volt panels but i wasn't right, sure so how that was going to what's your control will it take 24 volt no it's 12 volt only and then you'll have to run it 12 volt only and i guarantee you look it up right it'll be 12 volt only Okay. That's why I want to get the MPPT. I want to upgrade. A little better. Yeah. MPPT. In Tisha's case, she bought a kit from Amazon with the 400 watts of solar panels and a PWM solar controller. I caught up with Tisha recently and she shared with me that if she could do it all over again, she would just as soon get an MPPT solar controller instead of the one that came in the kit. So if you're starting from scratch, you may want to take a look at going with an MPPT solar controller. That's what I use. I started with the PWM. I eventually went to the MPPT. I can't speak enough good about them. And the one that I use and the one that I recommend to folks would be the Blue Sky 3000i. And I'll go ahead and put a link down in the notes. They run just under 300 bucks and they can handle up to 400 watts, which would work just fine in her case. And they're also programmable. So you can set the absorption and the float rates at whatever your batteries can handle. If you notice in the front, the Z brackets have a little space because of the contour of the roof. And if we try to screw that down sometimes will cause a little stress fracture in the aluminum bracket so to take steps to avoid that we're going to create a, a spacer that we can put in there that takes up this space so when we cinch it down it doesn't pull the z bracket down with it half so about right here That's the coolest thing about doing this in a large group is that we have we have a lot of like somebody be, will be done with one material and we have those extra materials we can just That's play hard, with. Don't it? This will work. We're gonna we're gonna be squeezing it down. Yeah, I know it. So you got that one. Squeezing it down. That one. Maybe that one could be better. Yeah, see what that looks like. Can you work with that? We might be able to trip off, trip them with a razor blade too, a little bit. Might. They don't need to look perfect. This is going to be see good. Them. See, when I pull this down, okay. it's going to be good. In fact, we might use the inch and a halfers on right. on the outside. Okay. Look at it. Right here. Someone's excited. I'm so excited. Okay. Okay. Right here. Oh, this is awesome.
have a drill extension. I was just gonna go grab one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I've got one that I think is gonna be perfect. I got one of those wiggly ones. So if, if it needs to be the wires go down between the spot right here in the cabinets down to the battery then from the battery in the back over here to the charge controller and to my fuse box right there you got it all mapped out yep I, I did a whole schematic and everything before I started did you I do it on paper or did you do it on uh, software paper yeah okay. classically <laughs> classic professional yeah I'm an artist so I mean I can do that, but um, I even like did the whole cabinets in um, cardboard first. All right, so we're gonna line these up to where they're square with the vehicle, and then put two more. Could you have that? Uh, what do you call it? Cardboard. cardboard. And then we're gonna put two more, say right here, so they'll come. They'll fall almost right at the beginning of the back window. That's perfect. Is that cool with you? Yes, that's and perfect. And then we'll make our... Um, and then all of the cables will come this direction. So yeah. the cables on this side will be here. Does that make sense? So the bottom of the panel is where the cables are, and then this will be flipped so that the bottom of the panels is where the cables are, so it's easy to connect them all together. Do you have the Ys that it came with to tie in the panels? Yep. Okay, let's go ahead and grab those. Okay. And when Larry's ready, we'll get all these things kind of in place. Oh, I shouldn't jump four panels oh, up there. So exciting. <laughs> we don't need all four panels up here. No, we just need to make we sure that we... Go from there. We, uh, yeah, we're going to mount two and then mount the other two. I okay. Think, yeah, shouldn't we? Yeah, that's how I see it. I just want to make sure no, that boy, like we it. got Did the wires the coming out the back. Hear me on this side over here then? Yes, sir. Right. So what do you need the Ys for? Because she's going to tie these lines in with those lines with two more panels, and the Ys will bring it all together. Okay. So uh, I think we ought to, if you're not going to overlap these little pieces here, because you're only going to need the two on the outer edge. The center ones ought to be pretty flat. Right. So I think we ought to move this panel out of the way, get that one cleared in, and set this, and then we'll be one once we measure them off. I was thinking we could use one screw on both of the Z brackets in the middle on this. What do you think about that idea? I like the idea if we can do it. I, we can do it. I'm not up there high enough to see down in there if we can drill the screwdriver. Yeah, out we there. can do it. I so, do have an extension for that. I, I'm all set up. I, I got you, man. All right. So um, I'll grab that tool, and then I'm going to get up on the roof, and then you're going to tell me where to screw the the solar panels so they're square on the van, okay? I think we'll just measure from these little brackets out to this corner on both sides and we'll get them pretty close. Well, I'm not gonna be able to see this side when I'm in the middle, so you wanna take a so look right now? we got Ed and we've got another ladder. Ed, can you take a look at this? Ed can be on my ladder, because I'm gonna get on the roof. Now that we know the position of where our solar panels are gonna go on the front, I'm gonna prep the area with some isopropyl alcohol to clean all the residue off, and then we're gonna use some butyl tape, which is a, a sealing tape for rooftop penetrations for RVs. And I'm just starting from the inside because I'm going to use the same self-tapping screw in this sheet metal on both Z brackets and that'll pull them in and then we'll have access to the outside. But we want to make sure we do the inside first while we've got more room. All right, you want to put yours where you want it, Larry, and then Let's do that. Wait, wait. So like those hole, the holes in the center of the roof should just be in the center of that trough. 
and then everything will line up perfect. Well, I've already marked it from where you guys told me to put it, so I don't want to change the play now. That's about three inches though right there. So you want to go well, he's right two, there? That's two and a half. So what? front to back, tell me what you want and I'll give it to you because I don't want to mess up the butyl tape. You're at uh, two and five eighths there on the you front. Like I said, it's going to be wider. No, it's going to be wider. There's All nothing right. you can do so about like the band it? being wider. But yeah, as long as his is about the same. Once, once he sets his on there, if he's got it somewhere around two and a half to two and five eighths, and if he's got uh, about two and oh, three eighths or seven sixteenths there, he's all right. But just set his on, set yours back We're gonna do the front one first so I can get in all right, with, my, with my tool. And then all he's gotta do is measure his once you get him in there. What do you got, Ed? I got nothing yet. Need a ruler? No, I got one. Let him put that screw in up front. If you do that, you don't gonna be able to move it. Yeah, but you guys should be where you want. Go but ahead. You mark the center of the trough, right? The hole you're drilling is right in the center of this trough? The center trough? It looks like it is. Okay, well here, measure it real quick. Once that's established, it should be perfect. You I want mean, to measure it? If you pick up the center from here to here and put I, don't, I can't the do that because the solar panel's in the way. All well, I can, can measure is from the outside. Uh, but you guys already measured it. I already marked it. There, yeah, just hold that if you would. That's on screen. That's on the hammer drill. Okay, so if you could push that in a little bit from the front, it will take up whatever gap we got. You there? Yeah, he said he was. Which one is down? This one or both of them? This one here, you gotta go back up like that. Which one did you? He just done the front and center one, which is doing this one both here. Up. And then you do the other side. And both on the same piece of tape. Now, what do you got there, Ed? Ed. I got two and a half. I got two and a half. There you go. Really close. Uh, right, me too. I think it's perfect. Oops. But I mean, you close me enough in? that you can push, push it me together in? and I'll hold this. Push me in. There you More. Go. More. I've been using uh, nuts and bolts, but in her case, she's got a, a complicated ceiling and just wanted to use self-tappers. And okay. that's all Larry used on his solar panels for self-tappers. And some guys just that's use That's all tape. I used, too. That's what they sent me. Oh, okay. And, and most people that's the what they use. Because, they they you don't know. come out? They don't loosen over time? Yeah. I just glued mine down, put the screws through it. And he's getting ready to glue all this down. You know what I could do? I could go right behind that front one with another self-tapper and just penetrate the aluminum. Why don't we do that? All right. That wouldn't hurt call my feelings at all. Ain't gonna cost anything, is it? Nope. I feel good about that. Okay, now you need one to act like that yeah, too? Yeah, we'll do the same thing. That's what I was thinking. And it, it sounded like it even went in tighter. Yep. It's funny that uh, you put so many screws in that you can tell by the sound. Yeah, I was thinking I the same thing. <laughs> So now we're ready to do the outside ones and figure out if we need our wedges, what wedges we have, because we've right. got them. If I was you, I'd just come on each side and you just look at it. If you think it's clean, clean it and put your uh, tape on it. If you think you need a wedge, we got the wedges, buddy. We got right. we got the best wedges ever. Make it stronger. I could come back with a couple of screws on this too. I could not even use that hole. Right. I could go in the front and in the back. You want to do that since we're using self-tappers? Yeah, that works pretty fine. You don't have to use the whole stuff there. I like that idea. Did you try a couple wedges in there and see how they look? I like them. I'm gonna, uh, uh, the way that the panel fell on the roof, we're not gonna need them as thick as they are. No. But I can put one in there and then just cut off the excess once it's bound in with the screws. And I just say, we, we cut them well, thin Cutting with off them. the excess is gonna be kind of tough. 
Well, you think? Yeah, because it was tough to cut them in the first place. I'm okay with the excess being there. It doesn't have to look perfect. I, I had some at home when I was going to bring them. I need more of an extension. I need to go back. Larry, I need to go back to what I had because I'm coming in at an angle because of my chuck. Okay, I got it right here. What do you mean, your chuck's hitting it? My chuck's too big for the way it's got to go in. That's what I told you, Terry. These. You already got that one done. Walking a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Instead of the whole foot in there. Right, because I'm going to put two in instead of having one screw holding it all the yeah. way around, where I'm going to have it where it's two. Oh, yeah, that's so much tighter. That ain't never tightens up how much more. Oh, yeah. that grab you? Oh, that's perfect. That's awesome. That is never coming off. I Not love it. Tell. I love it. Well, all yeah. Right. All Let's right. Keep it going. Let's do the rest. I might take it because That's it's what they too. said. I thought it was kind of small. I did too. Yeah. Hers was a lot heavier. But well, it's because probably it's probably because this is a thirty amp. Are 40 amps, and that's yeah, hers was a 12-24 bolt control. Yeah, exactly. 12. And so mine's just right. 12. And so and that would make sense. Right, and you, you, each panel's going to be bringing the same thing down to you. Yep. Ready to current. 40, 48 volts. Let's see how you did that. No, it's a DC 1224. <sighs> Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, cool. System voltage, 1224. Flat and you can have 48 volts going in there. Okay, so it's 24. But no, what, what, what the 24 is, is like if you hook the panel, with it, they will put 24 volts out and put it in this and the 24 volts in this thing. Here, we'll switch it over and make it 12 volts out. Oh, right. If you just have I see, so you overlap the hook. Okay, I got it. Hand me those uh, five steps, would you? Thanks. Got to get my camera up here. Oh. Do you have a computer? Yeah. We can put this on your computer too with the chip. Uh, well, on computer, not with me though. Oh. You'll have it online, I'm sure. Yeah. I want to get my own pictures. It's okay. Make sure we film this because uh, I want to film things that come out that look like mistakes. Savannah, you like my aloe vera plant? Don't pee on it. She doesn't go inside. She's good about that. No, she's right here. She's no, she doesn't go potty inside. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, if she's inside, it's all good. Take a picture of this. Sometimes your tape might wrap around the, the self-tapper, so we just grab another one. No big deal. One of the things we want to be careful of though that is kind of a big deal is that when we're driving these self-tapping screws in, when we start to get all the way seated, we want to make sure that we're not using too high of a setting on our drill for the drill clutch. Stay on that board if you're going to be on the roof, man. And, uh, and we don't want to just keep driving the threads on the self-tapping screw, otherwise it won't uh, stay tight. If it, if it goes all the way around and keeps spinning, you've spun out and you're not grabbing anymore. So that's just something we want to be careful about. We 
I've already got this going in. Where am I? Okay, we'll see where it's going. That's better. There we go. Have it squeeze out. <laughs> and that rubber stuff. What is that called? This is floor matting. It's probably recycled <laughs> car tires. <laughs> this is floor matting and we're using it to make up the difference because of the curve of the roof because if we don't do that, these aluminum L Z brackets are soft enough that they'll go ahead and, and shape with the roof, but it could cause a stress line fracture down the middle of it that over time could be a problem. Okay. So with these in place, that's a consideration that we don't need to worry about. All right, we're plugging a, we're taking an adapter and plugging a, a, a positive into it. Now she'll, this is on one panel. Now she'll take a positive on her panel. And she'll plug it into that one. Now if you look, you'll see here now we've got two positive. So we brought two panels down and we made one positive connection right here. Now we're going to do the same thing with a negative. I'm going to take a negative and I'm going to plug it in here. Now she's going to take a negative and she's going to plug it in there. Now this is just like your battery. You got a positive and got a negative. Now we're going to take these two panels and we're going to do the same. <laughs> Are you connecting something now or no? No, uh, I was just explaining to him how, it, how it's working. Okay. So, um, so here we got that's all negative. The negative on this panel and the negative on this panel connected together right here. Right. And that combines the electricity from uh, each of those panels. Right. And then the positive on this panel, positive on this panel combines. Got it. And then we do the same on this side. So the negative and negative, or yeah, positive and positive, negative and negative. Okay. Then we take the uh, the positive and positive from the two groups okay. and we'll connect those together into a positive okay. and then we'll do the same thing the negative and the negative into a group and we'll connect those two together and that's what goes to the battery and connects is that directly in parallel, to the battery. Is that considered charging. in parallel when you're doing it that way? It is, yes. Okay. It's, so what's happening is these two are in parallel, these two are in parallel and then the two of them together as a group, then become in parallel. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Does that make sense? Yep. It does yes. Make sense. Okay. With four 100 watt panels on the roof, how do we wire this all together to have it make sense when we go inside? Now that we have these groups wired together, then we're going to connect the negative from this group and the negative from that group together, and the positive and the positive, so that we only have one negative and one positive cable coming out going to the uh, the batteries. So this is a, the negative for this group and we're going to clip that into the negative and we'll do the same from this group. Clip that in like that. This is the positive from this group. And then the positive from this group. And clip those in like that. And now we have everything set up so we can just mount it right here. And the negative and positive can go, we can drill it down um, it, into the roof 
and the cables will just go down to our charge controller in the roof. Our charge controller in the uh, in the cabin. <laughs> Before we mount this set of solar panels, we're going to hook everything up together and test it with the voltmeter to make sure that it's putting out the the volts that uh, came with the package. And if not, then we can troubleshoot and see if one of the panels might be damaged or something like that. All right. So now, since uh, these wires are exposed, we want to be very careful not to touch them after we've hooked everything up because these are going to be live wires. The moment we take this cardboard off of these uh, solar panels, they're going to be running energy immediately. So we just want to make sure to stay safe. The reason we have the cardboard on is to actually protect against shock while we are installing these things. Um, uh, but that doesn't guarantee that there isn't electricity still going through it. So just be careful and be uh, very aware of where your wires are. Here we go, we've got the negatives from all four panels connected together and we're gonna just slide that in. And now our negative is live. And do the same with the positive. And we'll keep those kinda in that direction. Woo, be careful, don't do that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these connectors and we're gonna just slide them under right here, nice and snug on each side. And then we'll bring the solar panels really close together so that we have as much space as possible in the back for possible uh, panels to be added again in the future. Uh, bef before we hide all our work, we're going to test the live wires with our voltmeter, make sure everything's working fine, that there isn't an issue in the system and then we'll proceed with hiding everything under the uh, panels and moving the panels over. So the black on of so the black cable on the voltmeter goes on the negative. And the red cable on the voltmeter goes on the positive. And we're just checking. So you can see even with the, uh, the cardboard over the panels, we are still getting power. We've got 6.2, 6.25 volts running through these panels right now. So it's a good thing that we have, uh, that we have the cardboard on it and we got to just make sure to keep our cables out of the way so we don't let's cause any ball, safety issues. Does, okay? So I'll let's take all of the cardboard off and see how much power we're getting in this system. Right, I'll, I'll hold this in case the on it. Okay, there is a thing on there. Okay. Okay. Even if you have those wires sitting on that cardboard, it'll throw the reading off, okay? Okay. Even, yeah, even that stuff sitting on it will throw the reading off. Okay, how do I keep it? Just put all that stuff in the middle and between the panels, all your meter and all your wires and stuff. All right. So we had to... Uh, so when you're taking these measurements, you want to make sure that your multimeter is set to be able to measure uh, as much as you're expecting to be able to draw from the panels. We had it set to 20 and these panels are actually producing more than 20 watts of power. And so if we set it up to 200, it'll, it'll allow the voltmeter to, re to read how much power we're actually pulling. It looks like we're doing 25.1 volts of power so it looks like we're getting 25.1 or about 25 volts of 
power through these panels and on average you should get anywhere from 18 to 22 volts uh, because of the way that we've wired these where this group is in parallel this group is in parallel and then we've grouped or we've done the parallel together for both groups all right with everything working on the outside we're ready to mount the panels and get to the inside perfect okay <laughs> we, we cut the end of our cables to test the voltage but we don't want these to touch now that they're getting power so i'm going to go ahead and clip them off independently and wrap them with some electric tape till we get them down inside that way we know they're not going to make contact we don't want these touching because now they're putting out a lot of power we've got them all taped up and now we're, we don't have to worry about them touching or about brushing against them and getting electrocuted so we're going to move on so i'm saying i want it I don't see any benefit to gapping this, do you? No. Maybe I'm not going to gap it. At all. I mean, what what do you need it? You said you wanted to push it up to me, would you? My wires kind of up underneath the panel what you told me. Can you push it up to where your edges are good? <laughs> my edges are good right now. All right, I'm going to lift this and twist it. I think I'm going to lift it and twist it. Maybe I'm not. Okay, now if you'll give me, what are you hooking? If you'll push that up to right there and put your seam up good. tight and up tight, but nobody's up tight. The way I'm able to lean over this ladder like this is because Larry is holding the feet of it. Otherwise, this would be really dangerous, just so you know. All right, so you like it? I'm good. <laughs> A little bit of butyl tape for the seal and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put a companion screw in it just because that'll make it twice as strong and I've got plenty of uh, surface area on these Z brackets to accept another one and why not let's just get it extra tight on there so when she's doing 150 running from the cops her panels don't fly <laughs> off <laughs> let me see what this looks like if I'm looking at it from the back of the vehicle forward. Larry, I think I might just be up on the roof on this one. You need any like cardboard put down for your knees? I'm on a piece of plywood, so I'm probably okay. I just know that stuff will get pretty hot if this piece is in the shade. So right? Got it. All right, thanks. How are you guys doing? Good. We've got the floor. A little bit of isopropyl. So this is what I came up with. You know it's not working. We've got the side panels. We've got the side panels. Paneling's against the wall, but it's not secured or covered or anything. I'm going to take this butyl tape and I'm just going to double it up because uh, it's not going to hurt anything for it to be twice as thick. Maybe you wouldn't have to double it up, but a little more is not going to hurt you. that together like that. In fact, I'll just quadruple it up. Stick it right there. Our holes are matching up absolutely perfectly. Let me show you. That's where we're going right there. So I'm going to drive our first set screw home right in the middle and then I'll put a companion just north of it. Just taking it easy. Don't want to strip it. Just taking it easy. Put one more in. The, with the hole that they provide, and then I went into one corner on the 
front side and the other corner on the back side. So we've got three set screws going through that sheet metal. And for the amount of pull that's going to be against these uh, Z brackets, that's more than enough. And that's how I like it. So, so now let's just do the outside. Yeah, this is the, the probably the best size right here. Okay, give me that one back. Sorry. I only need two because these are good. These will be good for it. I would put them wherever you can. We'll just. Well, we have enough room right there. Let's do it a little bit. Well, the cable was. It's actually pretty sturdy. So it should be good, I think. If it was your choice, and you can pick anywhere. If it were my choice, I'd love to come in like through this <laughs> or something. You like to come in through that? What yeah. Is that? is that a bolt? It's where the seat belt used to bolt in. Do you like it? Pretty good. Well, you got her, but yeah, I guess it's alright. Alright, I'll, I'll come in from the outside and fix it. Let's go fix it. Fix that. Oh yeah, you you the multi bit. You step that down the side. The bit's still in. Let me just back it up my face. That's all. Since we know that that's a safe place. I'm going to go in from the inside and do it. And I might miss. I mean, I just don't want to not come out in that same exact hole. Yeah. You need a step better. You got one or you got what you need? Um, I think I have what oh, I okay. need. I see you got it. I just don't want to come in from the outside and miss that and miss that hole coming back inside. What's that? Is it too thick? Well, what it is, is it's uh, probably a heavy grade steel oh. to hold seat belts. Oh, yeah. And so I'm going to try to do it a different way. Let me go in from the outside and see what happens. Yeah. I'll just do the outside layer and see if I can find that. I bet we can. This is a masonry bit with. Yeah, you want the step bit? I don't think I'm ready for it. Oh, I mean, you're, you're, hey, it's your call. I just want to go in more yeah, so than okay. out. Let me get over with a better body position. You can go straight down and I think you'll still have plenty of room. For you that. need this little one? Ooh, I don't think so. I think this is good. I just need to be on the right side. I'm just spectating. I mean, Abe, we took training in that, you know. Spectating. Thank you. for it. Put a sharp edge on this bit. 
Could be it. Can you see it through? No. Let me see. Yeah, ours had like what I have. Yeah. I mean, then that's a little sharper. Now I'm gonna stagger these on my fishing rod. I think they did that just to prevent it from... Yeah. Oh, it's, it's just tape on the wire. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> did you get it through on the first try? <laughs> is put a piece of Gorilla Tape. I just cleaned this with isopropyl alcohol. Put a piece of Gorilla Tape to hold these in place. The Gorilla Tape's not gonna last you forever, but it could be changed in maybe two or three years, depending on how much sun you're in. They also make double stick tape mounts that you can stick right there and then put a zip tie through it. Chances are those things can only last you a couple of years too. If this was free floating, that would be okay. It's just a small run, so it's not, I'm not super worried about it, but we're gonna put a little piece of Gorilla Tape here, and then I'm gonna caulk this with this uh, General Electric silicone, which I really like and I have a lot of experience with. This Gorilla Tape will rip. You can you can uh, separate it by ripping it, but since we're doing this on our van, I'm gonna cut it to make it a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna just use my razor knife for that. If it was underneath the house and I was just taping a furnace stuck together or something I'd probably rip it but in this case I'm gonna cut it so it looks a little bit neater so I've already cleaned this with some isopropyl so I'm just gonna put it about right there and right there and it and if nothing else this little piece of Gorilla Tape fastening down to the cables will help hold the wires down from vibrating in this in this penetration, and it also will keep the wires from kind of beating against the truck at high speeds. I don't think it's a big deal. My, I, mine will do it a little bit, but you can barely even hear it when the radio is on. You can't even hear it. So now we're going to put the silicone in. Now one of the things about this is you want to go in, take our little dried up glob off the top from the last job you want to pull the wires out a little bit and get it all around the inside that's really important apply it liberally getting it down inside squeezing it down inside and then I'm gonna push the wires down and you can see it pull that silicone with it see it pull it with it I'm gonna go over to the inside and fasten this cable. 
so it doesn't move back and forth now that this is kind of our seal point. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's after I see, after I fasten the cable on the inside, I'm gonna come back out and see that I didn't push out my feed through bushing if I was using a feed through bushing or that I didn't push the cable out and the globs way out here now. You just wanna come back out and double check once you fastened it on the inside that this seal is where you want it and how you like it. All right, so I have to do an inline fuse from between here and the charge controller, right? Well, it says the charge controller has got one built into it, but it's not going to hurt you any. Yeah, I'd rather have yeah. a fuse that I can replace easily right. than to have the charge controller fuse that I have to pull out and right. get that pain in the ass. So how do I put this on? All you got to do is cut this like in the middle here. Okay. Strip one end of it off, put it up into your positive one right here where your solar panel comes okay. in. And then take the other end of this, strip it off, put one of these butt splicers onto it, and splice it in right there. Okay. All right. So it'll be, I'll it'll watch be you. held you right to, here, right? You need the crimpers and stuff? Yes. 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 Yeah, you, you got a screwdriver? What do you need? A Phillips? I I don't need the screwdriver. Oh, wait. I do. Yeah. Well, I, I have my... You don't want to use that? I don't want to use that? No. Okay. I don't want to use that. <laughs> I do want to use the power tool. I do, but I can't. <laughs> I shouldn't. That's funny. What size of wire is this? Big one. Let's try. Might be a 12 hour. Just looks so big on the outside. Oh no, 10. 10 is good. Alrighty. <laughs> Did it hit you? Yep. Okay, awesome. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I'll probably get you again. Well, interesting. Okay. So, this is where the solar connects, this is where the battery connects, and this is where the load connects. Yeah. And you're so solar right now. I'm solar right now. And you want to go on the positive side. So, this is to mark which one's positive and negative, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I need another fuse for the negative? No. Just the positive. Positive. Okay. And then. Okay. Strip your wire. So how much do I need it stripped? Uh, let me show you something with it. Okay. So let me see the little butt. You see that little little piece down in there? Yes. That wire will go up against it. You don't need that bare wire any more than from the end of this metal here to that little butt there. So what is it, about like that? Yeah. Because this here, will be, your insulation goes down in there. Okay. You see what I mean? So yeah. your insulation goes to here, your bare wire goes from there to there. Okay, so it's only a few centimeters. It's like yeah, and then you use the good crimpers to crimp it. And, you know, I showed you the female and the male, or the split into it, you know. Yeah. Cool. And harder and harder to do this. I don't even know why. Like, uh, there we go. Where do I crimp it? Look, give me one of your crimper things or your butt splices and I'll show you. Just hand me one. Now let me have your pliers. I'm not crimping anything, but look. Okay. You got a split right there. The split goes up in this hole here. And you want to go just about right there, see? 
Okay, so you want to make sure that the split is in the top part, right? Yeah, the split goes in the top part because see right there, that little indentation right there, that little nipple sticking up? That yeah. will split that enough and push it down in there, and then this will make that crimp into that. Okay. Hold on, so you need them, you don't yeah. need this here. Yeah, you don't want to be on the lip of either side of it. You want to actually be in the middle of them two places I showed you, though, where the <laughs> insulation starts and... Let's do it like this. And crimp it good too, like you're trying to kill it. Crimp it good. Push it good. Push it real good. Let me know if I need to like rein her back a bit. That's three for three. Oh, did I hit you again? <laughs> I'm just a good shot. That's awesome. We are solid. All right, so now that we have the pa the power coming from the solar panels and into the charge controller, we're going to set up the same wire from the charge controller to the batteries. And I'm going to just mark this wire with some red tape so that I know that it's the positive wire. So while we're doing this, we want to make sure that the fuse is not connected so that we're not live while we're still connecting to the battery. too long. I'm going to shorten it a little bit. Come on. So now that I have the uh, positive set up to go to the battery, I also need to make sure that I have a fuse that goes between the charge controller and the battery. So this is also going to be a 30 amp fuse. So this is a 30 amp fuse from the um, from the solar panel to the charge controller and then a 30 amp fuse from the charge controller to the battery. Now, because my charge controller only handles 30 amps, that's what we chose for the fuse was the 30 amps. If your charge controller can handle 40 amps, then go with a 40 amp fuse. Make sure it's tight. We're good. Now we're going to add terminal connectors onto the fuse and connect back to the battery. When you crimp these connectors, you want to make sure that the point where each side of the connector meets in the middle is on this end of the crimper, where there's this little nub right here. 
and that'll press it down and pinch it harder and do a, a, a much better uh, hold. Oh God, that one's tough. Oh. <laughs> Just make sure that it's tight. gonna put this terminal connector onto the post for the battery and this is a, a uh, disconnecting post so it comes out and put it through the washers and then screw it back into the battery. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah Quake. Just screw that down tight. Because our fuses are not currently connected, we're, we know that we're going to be safe while, you, while we're working on this. Just make sure that um, when you're working with the battery itself that you don't touch both ends of the battery because the battery might also have charge. Recording. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with the negative cable. I want to mention that I did you, not I put a fuse between the negative wire. So we just hooked it up without the fuse. Now that I've got everything set up, I'm gonna put the fuses in so that the circuit is, circuit is complete and we can check to see if everything's working properly. It's got yeah. power. Because it has to have that guy. That's what that guy is. Oh, it is. It's awesome. It's coming in through <laughs> the negative. Oh, that's just so, so strange. There we go. Okay, so it looks like you have 12 volts. All right, it looks like everything's turned on. Oh, it's got a cute little happy face and everything. Happy That's face. awesome. Oh, it's happy now, huh? Yeah, it's got a happy battery face. 2.6 okay. wow. amps, 2.7 amps coming in. Remember Sweet. What you said? Ah! I <laughs> All right, I guess we can get Jamie and see what's next. Going off your <laughs> That's awesome. Is it the clock? It's it's a digital voltmeter. That's cute. I don't know how to set it up though. <laughs> But wow, he like made it all fancy and everything. And it matches. Nice. Oh, oh. <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. I like the stained wood look. Yeah. Um, so how do I set this up then? What is What does it do exactly? Because it's showing my voltage on the, on the charge controller. Well, you... A lot of them will put the display right there, and yeah. so maybe you wouldn't need it, but what I would use that for is I would mount it straight to the battery cables. Oh, down here? Yeah. Oh, that's meter. smart. Okay. And uh, I can, I can uh, let me see that and see if I can fix it a little bit. These are the screws yeah. I like for it. Okay. So, but I cool. only have those two, so I'll see if How I can do I get some more. How do I make it so that these aren't going to like electrocute something on the back? Or is I think they're fine, but I'll move them. About? No, I'll move you're them. fine. You're fine. So there you have it, a very comprehensive look at how a 400 watt uh, solar installation went in on Tisha's van. To this day, she's super happy with it. Now we didn't show how the batteries were connected. Let's cover that real quick. They're 12 volt batteries. So we wanna connect one of the positive to one of the batteries to the other positive on the other one and negative to negative. That's called parallel. That keeps the voltage the same, but it doubles the amp hours. We didn't cover the inverter. She had a modified sine wave inverter. Let's talk about that. When you go to mount your modified or your inverter, doesn't matter what it is, you want to come off of one of the positive cables, uh, terminals, and one of the negative terminals with some heavy wire. When you uh, parallel those, you want to use some heavy wire too, like a number two. Uh, one way you can check is if you connect everything together and you feel that wire and it feels warm, you need to go up. To a fatter wire. When you connect your inverter, you want to go off a positive on one of the batteries, negative on the other battery, and use say a 200 amp hour or a 200 amp uh, inline fuse, maybe 150 amp, 
maybe 250 amp. They make them in breakers too, inline breakers too, and that would be a good route. So that's how you would connect the inverter. Uh, Tisha remains super happy with her solar install to this day. It's still working out great. Uh, she'd like to go with the MPPT controller at one point like I mentioned before other than that It's providing unlimited power for her and uh, I hope this video helped you it ran long But it ran long on purpose because I wanted you to see every step of the process So thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next upload. See you later Okay, so you know during the course of this whole month that we're doing this it's amazing um, how many little bits and pieces you need to make these projects work and you can't expect the people to really know what they need because they don't have a clue or they'll order a, like a solar kit online and think that's everything they need to build it but they're, it's not it doesn't include a whole bunch of stuff so I know I ended up buying a compressor because we, uh, we needed a compressor for air to shoot some staple guns that I have and I bought a Ryobi tool kit because I didn't have everything I needed for the build and it just makes things easier but there was a lot of people missing their fuse panels we were trying to put together these little crimp on fuse panels everybody needs crimps when you wire things together no one comes with that stuff so you really ought to try to get some kind of a patreon thing going to help support these builds and I think it would make it easier because Jamie came out of a lot of pocket, I know, and, and I came out with, I mean, that's fine. I don't mind doing that. But, you know, I had to donate, you know, a couple hundred dollars, I'm sure, to make this happen. And if everybody would support a little bit, I think it'd be, it'd be better for everyone. Because, you know, if you pay a dollar, two dollars to watch a video, and if everybody does that, then that adds up quick. And we, that can all go back into helping the van, the van builds and for next year. And, I, and during the year, I'm sure Jamie will help, you know, when he sees somebody that needs a hand, he'll help him. Not just on the, that, the time of the van build, but supporting Jamie with the Patreon, I think, is, is a good way to go.